Hi, and welcome back to our next video. Today we head out with the Riyadh Rovers to take part in their dune driving course. The DDC is a prerequisite to go out on any of the planned Riyadh Rover desert outings. And even though we have driven in the deserts of Abu Dhabi a few times, we never took an actual course with instructions and consider ourselves total beginners. After meeting up with our eight-car convoy, we head south out of the city limits of Riyadh. The road slices through Jabal Tuwaik, or Tuwaik Mountain, which is a narrow escarpment that cuts through the Naj Plateau and runs approximately 800 kilometers or 500 miles from the southern border of Al Qasim in the north to the northern edge of Rub Al Khali. This section of the escarpment has a steep sheer wall and a dramatic 200 meter drop from the upper plateau. This area is where the new city of Kadia is being planned. Sharif worked on the framework master plan of this project for about eight months before we moved here. Kadia is an entertainment giga project established under Saudi Vision 2030, which aims to diversify the economy of the country and its reliance on oil. As we move past the escarpment, the landscape is dramatic, red sand dunes rolling far into the distance toward the northwest and golden dunes towards the southeast. Throughout, you see the natural shrubs and trees come into this arid climate, popping through wherever possible and planted along the sides of the road to prevent the desert winds from covering the roads with sand, reclaiming their natural place. The drama of man-made infrastructure slicing through the desert and mountains does not escape us, and we are struck by the majesty of this incredible landscape framed by man's demand to efficiently navigate this unforgivable terrain. Saudi Arabia is landlocked by a range of spectacular high dunes and long sand valleys, which are readily accessible so people can enjoy a unique blend of serenity and thrill. We headed south from Al Muzahmiya on route 30 to Bakra dunes. As we near the end of the paved roads, we follow a dirt track for five to ten minutes to get near the dunes where we will air down. For those who don't know, airing down your tires simply means deflating them to lower the tire's air pressure. By reducing the air pressure in the tires, the tire's traction area or footprint on the ground is increased, making it not only a smoother ride on corrugated washboard tracks, but it significantly increases the tire's grip, which is really important in the sand. This track was severely corrugated, which we really felt before airing down. For years off-roading in the UAE and Oman, we traversed washboard roads all the time. We actually used to think it was the result of the tank treads or caterpillar tracks from the road machinery that may have been used to grade the track but in fact, washboarding is caused by normal vehicles driving over a loose surface over and over again. Road corrugation is aggravating, teeth jarring, and shakes your steering wheel and beats the heck out of your suspension like nothing else. We hate it. Annoying ripples in the road are not only irritating and tough on your car, but they are also hazardous at higher speeds. And the irony of it is that driving on washboard roads actually make them worse. Off-roaders use the term 440 roads, where you either drive four miles per hour and take your time, or fly across the top of the washboard at 40 miles per hour, like a boat over the waves. Driving faster over corrugated roads feels better. You minimize the vibration inside the car, but at greater risk. Airing down can take a while, and there are many ways to do it. We have Ston tire deflators, which you preset to a specific pressure, screw on the valve, and walk or drive away. We love our Ston tire deflators. For years, we used a tool to unscrew the valve stem so that air quickly escapes from the tire, 
and other than the risk that the stem might fly out into the desert, this method is uncontrolled and you can't monitor the pressure. It's a bit of trial and error and you sometimes need to pull out your compressor to add air back if you aren't careful. Here we go, folks. Learning how to dune bash. Woohoo! What do you think, folks? Ready for this. It's gonna be fun. Rocky, you ready? I don't know. I think I'm gonna be scared. After we all deflate our tires, it is time to begin the course with a briefing session from our tour leader. Unfortunately, we did not capture any footage of the briefing session, but we can share a few cardinal rules, some of which we end up not following. In the desert, momentum is your friend, and using gravity to maintain your forward momentum is key. Stopping or slowing down too much in soft sand, your tires will dig in, and you're stuck. Loose momentum driving up a dune 
and you're stuck looking at the sky. If this happens, you need to reverse straight back down. Never turn as you could roll the vehicle. Driving over the crest of a dune is nerve-wracking. As you don't really know how fast is too fast, which can launch you over the top, or how slow is too slow, getting you bogged down on an upward slope. Even worse, as you approach the crest of a dune, you have no idea what to expect as you look forward and see only the sky. If you break at the top or lose your momentum as you are cresting, you can get stuck with all four tires in the air. We were determined not to let that happen to us. The car in front of us did exactly that and had to be snatched back down the dune so he could do it over. Yep, we were not going to let that happen to us. Now it's our turn. Yeah, our car is pretty heavy. With a tent, an awning on the roof, a storage box, and firewood on the back, a 40 liter water tank, and all our other gear in the car, not to mention the new steel bumpers and a winch we added. Yep, we are going to need a bit more oomph to get that momentum headed in the right time. direction. Here we go. Should we wait a little internal. bit? 12, 11, Coming up on the 30 Nine. seconds. Ignition sequence. Minus 30 seconds. And we've had a go for Four. auto sequence Three. start. Two. The SRV hydraulic torque has started. T-minus 21 seconds. Solid uh, rocket boosters to nimble now underway. T-minus 15 seconds. Roger, we've got a roll for a minute. Roger, we've got a roll for a minute. Well, that was ridiculous. Sorry for the low res footage, but that was all we got. So clearly, we gave it a bit too much oomph and we launched it. We landed really hard, hard enough that our tent and awning slid forward with the crossbars about five inches. Thankfully, nothing was damaged other than Sharif's pride. We were lucky that nobody got hurt. That could have been really, really bad. So, at some point, almost everyone got stuck, and that was the point of the course. Not only learn how to drive in the dunes, but to also learn how to get unstuck. Here you can see a recovery using a snatch strap. A snatch strap is different from a tow rope because it actually has 20% flex in it. So the momentum of the car and energy stored in the strap, the car free, which is a lot less likely to damage the car or its recovery point. When you do get stuck, you always need to know when to stop spinning your wheels, as that can just dig you in further and sink you up to your floorboards in the sand. Here you can see another strategy, which we used later. So repeatedly turn your wheels all the way to the left, then all the way to the right at low RPMs to slowly free yourself and raise the wheels up out of the soft sand. When the recovering car moves away, they do so at an even slow speed. And the driver of the stuck car does the same. And as soon as the tension in the strap tugs, the stuck car swiftly gets pulled out and can move to a firmer surface. Now it is our turn. Here we are in a similar situation and you can see how the car moves almost effortlessly out of the soft sand with a proper snatch. We got stuck three times in all. Twice we needed a snatch and once we managed to free ourselves 
using the right to left wheel turning strategy while in four low with diff lock engaged. The tank did beautifully, all things considered. Finally, we got close to our destination, the seasonal campout bowl, where some of us plan to camp for the night. It's called the seasonal campout bowl because that is where the Riyadh Rovers hold their annual season gathering. We were on the back side of the campout bowl in an even deeper bowl that was actually a bit tricky to get down into but then later found that it was even more difficult for some cars to get out of. Bruno and the patrol. He's not stuck, he's just waiting. We all waited our turn while our tour leader tried to find the easiest way out of and over towards the camp up bowl, which we finally all managed to do so. So this is our last action movie sequence, which again is not great resolution, but you can see that the tank had no problem getting out of the bowl, even with all the weights in and on the car. It was a bit bumpy at the top, but the new nitrogen suspension we installed did its job. I think we need to adjust it better for an even smoother ride in this kind of terrain. Clearly, we're still learning how to best manage our gear on the tank. When we finally got down into the campout bowl, we set up camp and were able to reflect on the day and to chill out. We stopped rolling the cameras, but we did manage to get a few shots of our setup and the evening. We cooked some food and had some great conversation and generally had a really good evening. The sight was magical. The sky was super clear and the stars were everywhere. We finally settled down in our tent and got some much needed shut eye, including Rocky. The next morning, we headed out again and had a much more relaxed drive where we didn't have to manage the driver ahead of us or behind us, which caused us to get stuck the day before. Are we leaving or driving? We're driving a little. So here we are in the desert. There goes the sheriff and his car. We camped overnight three cars camping and now we're heading home but somebody got stuck Hey everybody, here we are in the desert of Riyadh. So I don't know exactly where we are, we'll figure it out. We're in the Muzahmiya area, I know we know that much. But um, yeah, we went camping overnight. We're stopped here while our convoy is stuck over there doing a recovery. It's just three of us actually. Rocky's in the car behaving. But yeah, look at these dunes, look at that beautiful color. So we had a pretty good night. I mean, we slept like babies. Well, it's nice drive, and cool. We have to tell them. What? Our drive into the dunes, we got stuck. We did get stuck. A couple of times. Well, we got stuck a couple of times. Once we needed a tug, once we got out ourselves. Yeah, it was good. I mean, I think it's, I mean, that's the stuff you want to learn about, right? That's the stuff, that's why we're here doing this. So we can actually learn how to navigate the desert a bit. Not navigate the desert like, you know, Ibn Battuta or something, but, you know, <laughs> navigate sand dunes, I guess I should say. So, yeah, no, it was good. I mean, a lot of cars had had a rough time. They weren't high enough. They bottomed out. I mean, we did smack a bottom of a sand dune really hard on our first dune. But luckily, we, we replaced the bumpers with um, steel bumpers. Steel bumpers. 
but um, but yeah. if we didn't, I think we would have. Yeah, lost we probably would have smashed a bumper. Or lost uh, a a couple of people lost parts lost of their the cars. <laughs> undersides, yeah. trim. Yeah. One guy smashed his uh, his uh, windshield. windshield wiper tank, water tank. And he thought it was. Uh, cool. Thought it was cool, and so, so he's like, "We gotta get out of here." Stuck in the desert without coolant. Yeah. So. Uh, I'm sure it's happened to others. But at the end, people found the parts that they were, yeah, missing. People would pick it up along the way when they saw it. Yeah. And uh, people made their claims on these car parts, which was quite interesting. Yeah. But uh, it was a nice night, cool, cool enough to like be comfortable. Um, yeah. We had a good little fire. Safe good food. One. Good food. People stuck around for for dinner and the campfire, yeah. so that was fun. Yeah. And everybody headed out. And we met some good people. Yeah. It's good stuff. Yeah. So thank you, Riyadh Rovers. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And we'll see you in the next one. If you follow too closely behind a car who hesitates, Just like we did, back. you end up getting stuck instead of them. You might have noticed the tall flags on some of the cars which are highly recommended as they really do make the cars ahead of you more visible. This way you know whether they cleared the dunes successfully and that it is safe for you to proceed. So we're heading back home. Um, I'm not a fan of uh, dune driving. It's fun I guess but not fun all at the same time. It's kind of scary actually. But we've learned a little bit more about what to do. What not to do. And what not to do. I don't think Rocky's a fan. And it's stressful, let's be honest. Yeah. It's, it's a little stressful. bit stressful. You know. And exciting. I mean, you know, it's it's like anything. Anything that's exciting or stressful is you know, you kinda like it's definitely not boring, for sure. <laughs> not, not boring. Not boring whatsoever. And you have to be... Okay, which way did he go? Yeah, like, know. because we're not focusing right now, and we have lost our, our leader. So, there he is. Yep. Kind of stressful. We witnessed near collisions the day before because the driver in front did not have a flag or the use of radio to drivers behind them that they cleared. All in all, we had a great trip and really learned a lot. We aren't huge fans of dune driving. It takes tremendous focus and constant observation and evaluation of the terrain in front of you, much more so than in other terrains. The sands are constantly changing, and reading them is an art that takes a lot of practice that we just don't have. And frankly, I'm not sure that we are committed enough to dune driving that we ever will be. Good skills to have, no doubt, but there are more relaxed ways to enjoy off-roading that we prefer. I am sure we will do it again, but equally sure that it won't be that often. Yeah, they all be for the way to go. Yeah,
Yeah, they just last forever. You guys did want to put it in the, in the engine. You see the mountains on the other side. orangeness of the sand and then the mountains and then just for a little bit we could see the greenery of oh look at that the farmland come on that's amazing it's an actual farm in the desert incredible an oasis Gravel, rocks, everything. It looks like a well. Well, it's the end of the year, and we're going to be quite busy in the coming weeks, so we won't be making it out. But we will be making a longer expedition to some remote corners of Saudi Arabia when our boys are here for their winter break from college. And we're going to have a really cool surprise to share with you that we are super excited about. If you enjoy our videos and haven't already subscribed, please do so. Until then, peace, love, and adventure, and we will see you in the next one.